Welcome to Watsi Obsession, a channel that respects both victim families. We ask that you do the same in chat and in your comments. You know, like, when the whole thing with my parents happened, my parents called me the gate. Life is hard and people need each other. To have great family that you love and care about and miss is one of life's greatest blessings. I know, but you'll talk to them on the phone later. They had to go home. We'll talk to them later. You want to call them? You want to call Mimi and Papa? Okay. Do you miss them? Papa's not downstairs. Papa's not downstairs, baby. He had to go home. Say hi, Papa. <laughs> Say hi, Mimi. <laughs> Say I love you. I love you. Oh, you're so sad. I love Mimi. I know, baby. We'll go visit them next month, okay? Yes, you want to go visit them? Yeah. Okay. You miss them? Give him kisses. Yeah. Let's go downstairs see CC. You wanna go see CC? Yeah. Bella must have been so confused when that conversation was going on. What a way to wake up. You can tell she just woke up. You can see sunlight coming in through the windows. They're in Bella's bedroom and we all know that the girls were only ever in their bedrooms when it was sleep time. They're planning on going downstairs to see CC and Bella's asking for um, mommy and poppy and her grandma and grandpa, the Watts grandparents. And you can see the confusion on her face and the emotion that she's going through when she's starting to understand that they're no longer there anymore. And it's all caught on camera. There was a time when Bella Watts was happy. She was very happy. There clearly was a time when everybody in the Watts family was very happy. <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. Clear changes we can observe in Bella's personality, in her speech, in her demeanor, and the way that she interacts with the world is reflective of the change that the entire Watts family was going through and each person in that family was going through as they, in my opinion, were spiraling quickly into a state of absolute crisis that always carries the possibility of turning into a tragedy. And we are so, so sad that that is what happened here. The financial stress the Watts were experiencing and the pressure that Shanann put on herself to be something that she wanted to be and the pressure that Chris felt to be exactly what he didn't want to be 
it was just all too much of a burden for this family to bear. What was said explicitly by Chris Watts and several other people lets us know that always being on camera and always feeling the need to perform was one of the things at the center of chaos in the home. And the things that are said and the things that can be seen that are in the background reminds us that things are rarely as they appear to be. This video might just look like a cute family video where Chris is playing with his daughters and they're running around and just having a good time together. But when you listen to what's really going on, Chris does not want to be part of this video. Celeste and Bella want to play and Shanann wants him to show the world how energetic he is because she's recording this video to show how well Thrive Plus Duo, the Duo Burn Patch, works because it's supposed to give you energy. Oh, it's not going to work, baby. Daddy. Too late. Oh, yeah? Cece, get on Daddy. <laughs> no. Let's do push ups. Oh. Bella says, let's do push-ups. Dad, let's do push-ups. Because over the years, it is my opinion that Bella learned that if she wants to be in good graces, she needs to perform for the camera. Bella, you getting in front? Coral, are you getting in front? Yeah, getting in front? We do push-ups. Come in, come in, push-ups. You just need to see the push body. You good? All right. Cool. Do you think you can reject? <laughs> oh. reject. No purrs, Cece. No Hold purrs. on to Daddy. This is what Thrive Duo does to you. There you go. This is what Thrive Duo does to you. And that is the whole point of this recording. You guys. <laughs> Was that Stacy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Guys, if you no fall idea. off, we're not going to do it anymore, okay? There you go. Read, because we're not really ha here to have fun. We're here to make a commercial for Thrive Duo. Oh, you're down. Hey, you want to do that again? That's done. <laughs> I can't hear a thing. <laughs> You're still alive. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> oh. Oh. 100 miles an hour. I'm gonna do it again. You're losing audience, Chris. Uh, turn, 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 turn the camera around. <laughs> Why don't you do uh, oh, oh, oh. pull ups? No, I'm good. I'll catch these two. Oh. I do need to say that the material covered in this video absolutely does not imply that Shanann Watts was in any way at fault for the horrible death that occurred for her and her children, Bella and Celeste, and her unborn baby, Nico. This video is exploring the complicated situation that happened, the family dynamics, and the confusing things that were going on behind the scenes, so to speak, that helped to shed some light on the entire situation. One of the remarkable ironies in this entire case is that Chris Watts himself, in his post-arrest and entering into prison interview on February 19th, 2019, with Tammy Lee Graham Coder and Dave Baumhofer, tells the interviewers that the reason that he became so angry with Shanann was because of what happened in the event called Nutgate and what it ultimately did as far as separating himself and his family. And this is something that had happened before in their marriage, by whose fault nobody knows but the people who were involved. But as you know, if you've been following this case, Chris Watt's parents and his sister did not come to his wedding. In fact, barely anybody he knew was at his wedding. Did Shanann ever say anything to you about their relationship? The voice of Nicole Atkinson. She was the last person known to see the Shanann alive. The were in North Carolina, and I can show you a text that she sent me. She said, I think it was the second or third week she was there, and there's posts all over Facebook about it, too. She got in a fight with Chris's mom because she went to Chris's mom's house to visit and um, the grand, I think her name's Cindy, the other grandkids were there when they were older. Cindy bought ice cream that has everything Cece's allergic to in it. So Shanann asked 
and this is just her hearsay, I don't know. Shanann asked Cindy, please do not give this to the other grandkids until I get Cece to bed because she's not going to understand and she cannot have it. And she took it and put it back in the fridge and then I guess Cece went and bought it. So, um, they argued or whatever. Shanann went back to her parents' house the next day and I, for as far as I know, she did not go back and see his parents. But they celebrated Cece's birthday while they were down there because she turned three in July. And the parents did not come to Cece's birthday. <clears throat> Happy So I know there was like a falling out between Shanann and Chris's parents and then she called Chris and told Chris what was going on so apparently there was some issues with her and Chris um, and the whole thing I don't know and then I was told that Chris went and saw his mom and dad while he was there and spent the whole day there and Shanann's mom Sandy and Shanann both said that Chris was not himself when he came back. The only other time he's ever acted like this in their marriage was right after they got married. And it was because his parents didn't go to their wedding. Something very important to point out is that while Shanann was visiting her family in North Carolina for six weeks during the summer of 2018, Chris Watts was only there for that last week. And the entire other five weeks while Shanann Watts was in North Carolina with Bella and Cece, Chris was holding a hot and heavy fair with his mistress named Nicole Kessinger. Now, I personally believe that Nicole Kessinger was playing mind games with Chris, and a lot of what transpired between them is also what pushed him over the edge, turning him into a monster that was capable of doing what he did to his wife and two beautiful little girls. In fact, in his prison interview, Chris Watts himself says if he had never met Nicole Kessinger, he probably would never have thought that there was anything wrong with his marriage to Shanann. In Nicole Kessinger's interviews with law enforcement, she tells several provable lies that I have pointed out in a number of other videos, as have many other people. So it's hard to take her word for anything. But what we do know and we learned through her interviews, is that she knew a hell of a lot about Chris and Shanann's marriage, their family life, and their personal life. Let's listen to what Nicole Kessinger had to say about the event known as Nutgate. Let me reverse something. Your conversation with the children, or about the children, was there ever a talk about medical concerns with either of the children? Well, I know Cece is allergic to Peanuts, like pine nuts, pine nuts. So she has a nut allergy. Yes. Did they take meds? Yeah, I know that she had like an EpiPen, but as far as I know, she didn't have any meds. But I never asked. Like I was just told, like she has a pretty severe allergy, and enough to carry an EpiPen. That's pretty severe. Yeah. While we're on this, so when he was in North Carolina, um. This is all like hearsay now because it's like this is not a conversation. Like he's telling me this stuff, but who knows exactly what happened. But he went out there to go see his family and her family. And while he was in town before he went out to North Carolina, I guess his mother had accidentally like not exposed her to something with nuts, but had like given a product, I think it was like ice cream, to a different kid that could have traces of nuts or something I don't know but it was like his daughter was fine but she was like in the range of contamination and I think his wife was very upset about that and when he got to North Carolina he told me that he was supposed to spend like half time with them half the time with her family and that was supposed to be what it was I don't know but he said that he went to go see his family and they weren't answering the phone for like a day or two before he went out there and then when he got there there was a note on the door that said uh son if you step by we're at the beach and they ignored him for like most of the time that he was out there and his own family yes 
his mom, his dad, and what his you, sister. What's the significance? Do you know under, Do you know why? Yeah, he said, and again, I don't know what is true <clears throat> with this man anymore and what's not, but he told me that, like, leading up to it, I was like, well, why are your folks, like, ignoring you? And I was, like, really concerned about this. Like, every single day he would talk to me when he was out there, and I was like, you talked to your family today? You talked to your family today? Did you talk to your dad? What happened? Did you talk to him? No, I didn't. Or, yeah, I talked to my mom. Well, what'd she say? Are you going to hang out with him? Like, I wanted him to see his people because it's important. Family is an important thing. You know, it just needs to function properly. And, sure. And so I was like, well, um, and he was like, well, they're ignoring me. And I was like, what do you think happened? And he's like, I'm not really sure, but I think um, something was said between my wife and them during that incident and he's like because the every time I, yes that happened nuts. before he got there yes and he's like because every time that i try to um i talk about possibly going over there to see if they're home she gets upset about it and i was like okay and he told me that his mom and his wife did not get along at all he said that his mom didn't even show up to his wedding because she's like really did not care for shenan so again i don't know what's true and what's not but i just know that there was like some tension there mm -hmm. and again like that part is like i feel like it's almost third party so that's why it's sure. like I didn't even well but it, it came from him to you so it's not it is something that i um is whether it's important or not we can validate that I, i'm sure we will be having some conversations with family um you know it what does it mean i don't know um but yeah, I don't know either, but I just know. So like, maybe she, yeah, I don't know. Well, and then um, he ended up seeing them on the last like full day that he was there. And they told him supposedly that she had gotten really upset and then screamed and yelled in front of his, Chris's sister's kids that are very young and to his mom and to his dad and said like, you're never going to see Chris again. You're never going to see me. You're never going to see the babies and just like threatened them and then like walked off. And I guess that was the incident that happened prior to him coming out there. And then she didn't tell him about it. Mm -hmm. She just like let it go. And then he just spent all week trying to figure out why his family was like mm -hmm. not trying to be involved. Gotcha. Um, so again, I'm not sure that was like, it, it just feels really third party. So it's hard for me to like talk about because sure. like, I don't know how That's much okay. validation. Um, so be, beyond the, the nut allergy for CC, did you know of any other, did she take meds that you know of other than carrying an EpiPen? His kids or his wife? No, his children. No. And now, well, if you know anything about his wife's medical conditions, if she had any. No, I've like read in the newspaper, they keep saying, oh, she had medical conditions. And I'm like, is that a misprint? Are they talking about CC? Or is that just something else I don't know? So you don't know anything about nope. uh, Shannon having any kind of medical problems? No. Nope. Okay. We'll get back to the topic of Nicole Kessinger and Nutgate because I believe that Nutgate was also a pivotal event in the relationship between Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts, and I will explain why. But first, let me explain to you the event called Nutgate in my terms, in simple, unbiased terms, and then let's hear from Chris Watts and a couple other people. On July 8th, 2018, was the event called Nutgate. This was about a week and a half into the relationship with Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts, if you believe them when they tell us when their relationship started. On this date, Shanann accuses her mother-in-law, Cindy Watts, of allowing Cece to have some food product. The stories always change, that's why I'm being vague. Let's say it's vanilla ice cream, because I've heard that a few times that contains tree nuts in it. Therefore, the assertion was that Cindy Watts, Chris's mother, Shanann's mother-in-law, the grandmother of Bella and Celeste, was putting Cece's life in danger. Shanann Watts had maintained that Cece had an anaphylactic reaction allergy to tree nuts. From there, a whole series of events started to spiral out of control, and let's listen to what Chris Watts has to say about this series of events. It felt like I was more anger than, than anything else. Like there was emotion to it at first, and it just felt like it was just anger. It was just like, you no, know, like, like there was no love there. We didn't know, like, it, was, it wasn't ourselves. Really? Anger from you or anger from her? I think it was more anger from me. 
more like desperation from her to yeah. she knew she knew if something was right. Like you know, like when the whole thing with my parents happened with the somebody my parents called them the gate. What happened? Mm-hmm. Nut gate. What's that? Oh, the peanut. Know? The peanut. Oh things. yeah. Or what oh, peanut peanut. oh, with the, her family. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah Pistachio yeah. ice cream or whatever. Yeah. Else. yeah they, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that either. That was like another out. Like, you know, maybe I could have just like stopped everything and just kind of concentrated on helping like whatever happened there. Because Shan had a story, my mom had a story. Whatever happened, I'll probably ask my 10 year old nephew, probably can tell me what actually happened. Well, and they both have their feelings for good reasons, and they both didn't see it the other person's way. Yeah. And like, maybe I, because I could, I didn't talk to my parents from then on. Until like August sixth, and like you know, my dad took that whole week off. Wow. You know, your parents have been on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah, like my Janelle was like, do not talk to them, do not call them, do not do anything. Is that what she said? Yeah. And uh, the uh, Cece's birthday was seventeenth, but I think the actual birthday party was like a couple days after. In August. July. July. Yeah. And uh, like my my mom, or my dad was gonna go. But then there was like a post on Facebook about, you know, allergies and stuff like that. She had a maid, and I was like, no, I just can't, can't do it anymore. It's like, it's, he, he perceived that as her taking a shot type thing? Yeah. Okay. So based on what Chris Watts said there, we know that from July 8th was when Nutgate happened. Well, to when Chris Watts arrived in North Carolina, he wasn't allowed to see his family, according to him. His parents, the kids weren't allowed to see his parents until August 6th. So what happened on August 6th? We know that he saw his family on August 6th, and we also know that this note was authored, according to the penmanship here, on August 6th. The letter says, dated on August 6th, to to whom it may concern. If anyone gets this letter, I would never do anything to hurt myself or my children or my wife. If anything happens to me, Please investigate my wife. Signed in print and signature. So let's listen to something that Jamie Watts says in one of her prison phone calls with Chris Watts. This is a very emotional part of the phone call and notice what she mentions here. Exactly. So, you can, can always change. So, But our love for you will never change. Thank you. It means a lot to hear everybody say that. We mean it. We really mean it. So, so that's what love is, you know. That's what it is. Yeah. I really wish I could go back to Mom's porch. I know, me too. And just keep you. I really wish I could just go back there and keep you. Me too, trust me. I feel like God gave us that day. He did. Now, it only makes sense that that day on mom's porch that she wishes she could return back to, and she just wants to keep her brothers, she says here, would be August 6th, because Chris Watts had told us that he wasn't allowed to see his family until August 6th. And we know that the Watts family headed home from North Carolina to Frederick, Colorado the very next day on August 7th. So what exactly happened? What conversation went down between Chris Watts and his parents and his sister and whoever else may have been there that caused him to write this note and to leave it in his mother's care? We may never know, but what we do know is that Nutgate was a pivotal event in the life of the Watts family, meaning Chris Watts and his parents and his sister, because if it was because of Nutgate that Chris was not allowed, so to speak, to see his family for the entire time that he was out there when he lived halfway across the country, well, that obviously was a very big deal to all of them. Now, remember I said I would get back to talking about why Nutgate was a really big deal in the relationship between Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts? So why exactly did I say that? 
Well, we know from Nicole Kessinger's interviews with law enforcement that she did not like to talk about Shanann whatsoever. In fact, Kevin Kobach at one point needed to ask her, well, do you know his wife's name? And she just said, ugh, it's Shanann, just really belaboring the fact that she had to speak her name. We know from watching Nicole Kessinger's interviews, she talked down about Shanann quite a bit. And we're going to have to assume that if she was talking down about Shanann two days after the woman went missing, supposedly before anybody knew her horrible fate, we have to imagine that she probably wasn't speaking so well about Shanann when she was talking directly with Chris Watts either. So let's take a listen to part of her interview with law enforcement again when she's talking about this event that I'm calling, and a lot of people call, Nutgate. He said, and again, I don't know what is true with this man anymore and what's not, but he told me that like leading up to it, I was like, well, why are your folks like ignoring you? And I was like really concerned about this. Like every single day he would talk to me when he was out there. And I was like, you talked to your family today? You talked to your family today? Did you talk to your dad? What happened? Did you talk to him? No, I didn't. Or yeah, I talked to my mom. Well, what'd she say? Are you going to hang out with him? Like I wanted him to see his people because it's important. Family is an important thing. You know, it just needs to function properly. And, sure. and so I was like, well, um, and he was like, well, they're ignoring me. And I was like, what do you think happened? And he was like, I'm not really sure, but I think um, something was said between my wife and them during that incident. And he's like, because the every time... I, yes, that happened nuts. before he got there, yes. And he's like, because every time that I try to... Um, I talk about possibly going over there to see if they're home, she gets upset about it. And I was like, okay. And he told me that his mom and... Her, his wife did not get along at all. He said that his mom didn't even show up to his wedding. Okay, so based on what Nicole Kessinger told interviewers about the event called Nutgate, she knew just about every detail. And given the fact that she knew just about every detail, we have to assume and understand that Chris Watts told her every detail about this, I'm sure, including how he was feeling. Since we've learned from Chris Watts that Nutgate, in his mind, was basically the deal breaker that caused him to psychologically spin out of control. I'm sure he shared these sentiments with Nicole Kessinger or Nicole Kessinger at least picked up on that. Now, many believe that the last night that Shanann and those sweet little girls were alive and her baby was growing in her belly, that Nicole Kessinger gave him an ultimatum. It's going to be Shanann and your family or me. And now there are several things that exist as far as evidence that point to this being a very real possibility, including the 111 minute phone conversation, which went on from nine o'clock in 19 minutes to 11.28 p.m., just a very short time before Shanann arrived home at 1.48 a.m. on Sunday morning. And both Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger claim that they cannot remember a single moment of this conversation. I've made videos before showing how this is by far and large the longest conversation they ever had. The second longest conversation that they ever had was 50 some minutes, less than an hour. And this 111 minute phone conversation was, you know, approaching two hours. So when we look at their behavioral patterns, the length of this phone conversation was way out of the norm of their behaviors with one another in their relationship. It is my opinion that Nicole Kessinger knew that Chris Watts was so upset about this event called Nutgate that she saw that as her opportunity to finally break in there and legitimately give Chris Watts an ultimatum, it's either me or your family, that he would likely respond to with, you know what, okay, I am so over this. This is the last straw. It's going to be you. Forget my family, Nikki. It's all you. Me and you. Let's go, babe. It's all us. Now, I think it's clear to know that from Chris Watt's statements, based on what we've heard him say about Nutgate, it seems that he did, in fact, believe that CeCe's allergy to tree nuts was real. So let's listen to what somebody else had to say about what they believe they know about CeCe's tree nut allergy. This is the voice of Frank Rusek, Shanann's father, speaking. 
ongoing medical issues. I know um, Celeste had Celeste had some allergies to allergies. Um, the nuts. Tree nuts, is that right? Um, yeah, they had some other out, you know, allergies to grass and all that other stuff. Bella had um, she was little, she was allergic to eggs. Um, and she couldn't have the milk. She had to have another milk, and but because uh, they went, she put them all through. And Celeste has it also had a um, problem with her throat because they had to put her to, to do a test on her throat when she was little because she was having a hard time swallowing. But that went away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, that went away. That was Celeste. You said. Yeah, yeah. Bella had you know they had they had a little bit. of of allergy type things, but nothing that Celeste was the main one right now. Yeah, because of the nuts. So did Bella's was, did allergy go away. Bella's allergy. She did, well after it because they never gave her eggs anyway. So oh, okay. you know she couldn't have like cakes or nothing. But even if it was cooked, she she her throat would get a little bit clogged up. I mean mine does that too, but it's um, Shannon was no no can't be no no. So Bella was pretty much there was really no nothing that I can recall that she couldn't eat. Now I do need to note something difficult and it's a topic that some people don't like and I am sorry if you're one of those people but there are those out there and Cindy Watts, Chris Mott, Watts' mother is one of them who do not believe that Celeste was truly allergic to tree nuts. Let's hear what Cindy Watts has to say. In this excerpt, I am reading from the last, last chapter of Cindy Watts' book, All My Broken Pieces. Bella and Celeste, back and forth to doctors. Misdiagnosed for two years. I told Shanann that they had asthma and she needed to go find a doctor. She found a doctor one day. She went in to a PA, which is a physician's assistant, and she diagnosed them with asthma. Finally, the girls were doing great. Other than earplugs put in the girls and them being very allergic to tree nuts, which would have caused them death. It's true. Both girls suffered from failure to diagnose or to get the right diagnosis that people in their lives seemed to need for them. Neither of the girls ever displayed any asthmatic symptoms when I was there. And Chris admits now that... You want yucky? The most yeah. he saw was Cece coughing sometimes when she ate too fast. Bella did not suffer from any allergies at all. Despite this, we were told that whatever Cece was allergic to, and sometimes that was chocolate, sometimes peanuts, and later tree nuts, Bella was not allowed to have any of those things either. Young to know all of this, that Chris or Shanann told her that if Cece ate coconut, she wouldn't wake up. I wish no one had done that. She was a very quiet, gentle, frightened little girl. And after the age of two, she never looked healthy. And her hair wouldn't grow, and she was self-conscious about it. Talking about Bella, of course, now, I know she had the added worry of her sister dying and on her little shoulders. And Mama Bear, Shanann called her. She wasn't a Mama Bear. She was a baby. But she was right to worry, I guess, because the sister did die. Didn't she? Chris killed her, killed them both. I don't think that they had any allergies at all. I don't think they should have been dosed up with Tylenol every single night of their lives. And here's another thing that haunts me. The last day of their lives, they went to a birthday party and there was cake and ice cream. And those babies had to stand and look at it and none for them not even on the last day of their lives. So clearly Cindy Watts thinks that there are some questions about the, the legitimacy of Cece's tree nut allergy. We do know one thing is certain for sure that Cindy Watts had to say in that excerpt of her book, All of My Broken Pieces. Apparently Bella was in fact terrified about what might happen to Cece if she ate the wrong thing. The Watts family babysitter who babysat Bella and Cece, the Saturday before that terrible, fateful Monday morning, August 11th, when Chris went to the Lazy Dog Cafe for dinner with Nicole Kessinger. Well, here's what she had to say about a conversation with Miss Bella. 
So the girls are three and four, but do they talk with you a lot? Yes, they're very talkative. They're very talkative? Yes. So did they tell you anything that was happening? Was there anything that was concerning that you heard? Um, Bella just, she sat by me and she was really concerned. This, her little sister fell asleep before her, so she sat on the couch with me for a while. And she actually told me something. She said, can I ask you something? And I was like, yeah, she was like, my little sister has, like she told me if she eats coconut, she'll never be able to see her again. So I'm guessing that the littlest one has a severe allergy. And that's what they told her, that if she eats that, she'll never be able to see her again. And she was really upset by that. Bella was? Yeah. And so if CC ate um, coconut, she would potentially yeah. die? Yeah, I know she has a tree nut oil, uh, allergy, but I never heard coconut. So I wonder if they just, I don't know if she got coconut. So CC has a uh, tree nut allergy? Yeah, like a severe one. Now, I know I'm not the only one who has speculated, who has wondered, is this what Bella is worrying about in this video of her and Cece, where she is clearly very concerned about Cece being taken away? It is what us think. And we want to move Cece in bed. It's Cece. Okay. Oh, I'll say we her. Don't take her away. I'm not taking her away. Whoa! Be nice to see see. Her back. So now I want to go back to something that Cindy Watts had to say. What I'm about to play for you is an excerpt of a phone call that Cindy Watts had with the channel Miss Mensa a few years ago. And thank you, Miss Mensa, for allowing me to use this. Um, and listen, I know people are going to say, oh, you're representing Cindy Watts' side, but not Shanann's side, because clearly there were two sides. But I'm trying to do my best to give you a balanced and well-researched perspective on this whole situation. And we are going to hear what Shanann Watts had to say through her Facebook posts. And we're going to also keep that in context because she was going through a hard time. What I'm going to be playing are excerpts from an audio recording from the channel Miss Mensa. Miss Mensa had a relationship with Cindy Watts, and this is from a phone call that Miss Mensa had with Cindy Watts. Definitely go check out her channel and subscribe. There was a bag of, of pistachios that I that I had for my my grandson, and they were on the countertop. And I and she said, "Oh my gosh, Mimi, you have pistachios." I said, "I know. Put them on top of the safe." And she she put them on top of uh, on top, not on top of the safe, but on top of the refrigerator. And that was the end of it. It was a bag that was unopened for my grandson that I forgot that I had on the countertop. And that was, that was all it was. 
and there was no bags of peanuts, tree nuts, or anything out in the open. My house is small, so small that wherever Bella and Cece were, I mean, you knew where they were. I mean, they were right there. Uh, we have a very small house, and there is no way anybody could have gotten into anything, not even my refrigerator without me knowing. Well, so I was always right there. Well, did you give the girls ice cream? I gave, uh, Dylan went in the, the freezer and got a vanilla ice cream, a Walmart vanilla ice cream. And, yeah, she, Dylan did get that. And that was the big culprit, was the Walmart and vanilla? That was the culprit. That was when BC had a meltdown and wanted the same thing. But BC could have had ice cream because we went to the we went to Walmart when they came here and she had ice cream. Not in the same cup, but she had ice cream. And she could have gotten that ice cream. And yes, I did say that you can't always have what you want. I did say that, you know, because Cece had the ice cream that all Shanann had to do was go in there and get Cece her ice cream and put it in, in a bowl. Or, yeah. Right, right. And, that and that's right. That's you, all she had to do. And, and nothing would have come of it. And you took her to Walmart, right? And you spent a ton of money. So that she could have exactly what she wanted there. Absolutely. When they came down here, I said, let's go to Walmart and get everything that you need. And they got everything they wanted and they needed. Everything. There was nothing, nothing that, that, I don't know what I could have done. So at the point that you're, all I could have done. at the point that the ice cream started happening, then your daughter-in-law could have gone to the freezer, picked out the ice cream that was on her approved list, Absolutely. and scooped she out. Her, her little, she could have gotten her little. She could have gotten her ice cream. That's all she. I mean, there was there was nothing she couldn't have had that she didn't already have in in our house. She had everything that they needed, and I did the best we could. That's all. I don't know what else I could have done it. So when yeah. when the ice cream came out, your daughter-in-law started yelling? Yeah. She said, I know that this isn't fair. I know this is hard for you, Stacey. And she went on and on and on and on. And I, that, that's when I said, you know, you can't have everything that you want. Go back. Go back in there. Go get her the ice cream she needs that she wants. That was it. I mean, I don't know what else I could have done. What did she say to you before she left? She said, uh, she came charging down the hallway and said, you tried to kill my child. And then that's when it was over. I was done. I said, I, I can't take this anymore. You know, I didn't try to kill anyone. I didn't try to do anything. Um, I didn't. Tell, tell us about how the kids were hiding. Uh, when all the, argue, uh, the arguing was starting, it was Dalton and Dylan said, <clears throat> My friends, and I know that is such a heartbreaking thought for Bella to be so scared and sad towards the end of her way too short life. And I'm not intending to make a depressing video, but you know, when I try to tell the story of the Watts family story, I do not choose sides. I feel that it is important to represent the children's perspective the best that I possibly can from what I know. 
But I want you here to read some of the posts that Shanann had put up on Facebook after this event known as Nutgate happened. Now, I do want you to keep in mind that she was at this time 14 weeks pregnant or so, 13, 14 weeks pregnant. If you've been pregnant, you know that that can be a very difficult time for some women who are pregnant. But on top of that, she also knew that there was something wrong with her marriage and there was something terribly wrong with her husband. And I cannot imagine how much stress that must have caused Shanann. So please keep that in perspective. Here are some of the posts from social media that appeared after this Nutgate incident occurred on July 8th. This post is from July 9th, the following day, from Shanann Watts. It says, I need to vent to people who understand. My 2.5, I think she means you're old, is severely anaphylactic to most all tree nuts and we are visiting in-laws. I specifically said we can't have them in the house when we stay. My mother-in-law stated we don't buy them. I specifically mentioned the ones she is deathly anaphylactic to as well. I arrived and on the floor shelf of the center island was a bag of pistachios in parentheses, big bad one, I removed immediately. Today, she lets her other granddaughter eat an ice cream that has all tree nuts in front of and next to my 2.5 year old child that can have them. I said I didn't appreciate it and removed my daughter. Her response was she had to learn that she can't always get what she wants. I'm beyond furious and she's telling me I'm overreacting when my child's life is at risk. From July 15th, 2018, from Shanann Watts on Facebook, hashtag allergy awareness. I have been on such high alert this summer since we are traveling. Everything in our home is completely safe for Celeste, so I don't worry as much unless I go out to eat, which isn't often anyway. Some understand and some think I'm being paranoid. I have to hear my kid cry after taking a treat out of her hand because someone gave it to her and I can't read the ingredients. She is just turning three and don't understand exactly why she can't have what others are having. Parentheses. She is never around people in Colorado that are eating something she can't, so she doesn't feel left out. In parentheses. She thinks she is in trouble when I say no to something she can't have on this trip and I feel terrible for it. I'm so grateful for all of our friends, especially in Colorado, who consider my daughter's safety when we are around or they come over for play dates. I'm grateful for everyone who thinks and respects my daughter's safety while we visit North Carolina. Trust me, it's hard enough to have to read and reread everything. And I think that's in reference, of course, to the ingredients of foods and treats that her kids may or may not have. So here are Shanann's responses to some of her friends that asked, like, you know, what's going on to that post. So Shanann says, yeah, she's young, only 60. She completely understands. My husband called her after he got off of work and told her he didn't appreciate how she, hand how she handled the situation and teasing my two-year-old with the ice cream and putting her at risk to exposure. She also has um, eat something, I don't know what, and asthma. Her response to my husband was, quote, this is a learning experience to my two-year-old to realize she can't always get what she wants. F you. And then in the next one, Shanann says, I would be furious. While I get that she's family, like you said, she understands. My grandmother understands when I remind her at 86, but it's hard to get them to change their ways, especially since I didn't grow up with it. Your kid, uh, and then it just trails off. So then Shanann says, thank you. She is learning and she's way too young to comprehend how serious it is because she's little. My mother-in-law and I, I've sent articles, notes from doctors, information on anaphylaxis and how severe it is. She understands. She knows. I don't like my family eating it in front of her without her having an alternative option. I'm done 
and her response to her son set him over the top. Hmm. So here we have an alternative theory of Nutgate, so to speak. We have Shanann saying it was Cindy Watts' reaction that sent her son over the top. To fully address this issue, we do need to look at one important question, and that is, was C.C. Watts ever allergic to tree nuts to begin with? Now, I have done some extensive research on this topic, and I'm simply going to share with you what I found. I do want to say, to begin with, no spoiler alert here, I'm just going to tell you, I came to the conclusion that it appears unlikely that C.C. was truly allergic to tree nuts. And I do feel that it was Thrive, the multi-level marketing company's pressure on Shanann Watts to show how energetic she and her husband needed to be to keep up with Cece and to deal with everything that came with Cece that caused this idea of Cece having a tree nut allergy to exist in the first place. Okay, so we see here, poor sweet Bella's back with the inflamed allergy scratch marks on it. And let me just read you what Shanann said along with this picture. She says, oh my God, I hate it every time. She's definitely allergic to tree nuts. And then she says, this is five minutes later, not even a whole 15 minutes. So I find this to be very interesting because not once, never did we hear Shanann talking about Bella's allergy to tree nuts. It was always Cece's allergy to tree nuts. Always, always, always. In fact, that is what Nutgate was all about. So now we see here a picture of Cece's back with the marks on her back, and it looks like, I don't know if it's more or less inflamed areas, but Shanann says, holy allergies, add allergic to dog, cat, and mold. So on Cece's picture, she doesn't say anything about tree nuts, but she just says add allergic to dog, cat, and mold. Now could add mean that she's already driven home the idea that Celeste is allergic to tree nuts? You know, I don't know, maybe it does or maybe it doesn't. But again, the thing that stands out here when we compare these two pictures is Shanann pointing out definitively that Bella is allergic to tree nuts and us never hearing anything, no one ever hearing anything about Bella's allergy to tree nuts, only Cece's. Now we have a couple more issues. Let's take a look here at this video of Cece eating Fruity Pebble cereal, the breakfast of champions. It was known that she loved Fruit Loops cereal and Fruity Pebbles. Those two were her favorite cereals. Is it boo boo? Cece, are you hungry? Celeste, hey, are you hungry? Yeah. Yeah. Cereal. Cereal. I'll wipe it. We'll wipe it. So my friends, the problem is of course not that Cece's favorite cereals were very high in sugar, Fruity Pebbles and Fruit Loops. I mean, I know myself, my son when he was little and still to this day likes sugary cereals and I indulge in them myself as well. The problem is this, if you are to look at the nutrition label on Fruity Pebbles, you will find that it has tree nuts listed as an allergen. It has for as long as allergy alerts were required to be announced on nutrition labels. See, right here. So this is a label information from the manufacturer's website, just to make it a little bit bigger so you can clearly see that there's a label that says allergen tree nut. Now, in my last video on this topic, I talked about the fact that I had done research on this tree nut allergy a long time ago, and it's information I've been holding on to for a while. I didn't make a video about it for a very long time. So my goal here really is to put the issue to rest. So in case you have any questions left in your mind, I wanna point out this. When Shanann and Bella and Cece went to North Carolina, and then also when Chris joined them, they several times, got food at one of their favorite places in North Carolina, which is Bojangles, as pictured above. So Bojangles was apparently, as told by Shanann, a place where you could get food and they could guarantee that it was allergen-free for certain allergies, like tree nuts, of course. But if you read this passage right here, 
you will find that, well, let me read you what it says. Some ingredients and nutritional values may not be identified on this website. Test items or limited time offerings may not be included with the information on this website. Not all products are available at all restaurant locations. Some products may contain or may come into contact with allergens, including milk, eggs, wheat, soy, tree nuts, peanuts, fish, shellfish, and no guarantee can be made that no cross-contamination will occur or that our foods are free of any of these allergens. And now we also have the issue of the pro bars themselves. The pro bars that in 2017 and 2018 were promoted through several family homemade Facebook post commercials by the Watts family to try to attract people to purchase the product Thrive and ultimately, hopefully, become a consultant with Shanann because that was the business that she ran. So as we look at this issue, whether you agree that I'm looking into it or not, there is one critical question. Were there tree nuts contained in the Thrive Pro Bars that CC Watts was eating on camera? CC Watts was eating them on camera. The box was on camera. Shanann was announcing what the different flavors were on camera in the Facebook information um, messages or commercials about these Thrive Pro Bars, a new and exciting product for Thrive to try to promote and sell and attract new consultants with. So I have a question for you. I've asked it before and I'll ask it again. Does anybody know what Cece Watts' favorite flavor of Pro Bar was? Well, little Cece is going to tell you herself. Lemon meringue. What's your favorite, Cece? Happy um, birthday. Birthday, birthday? Uh -huh. <laughs> Mommy's favorite. What's your favorite? The cookies, cookies and cream? Yes, that's right. Cece Watts liked birthday, birthday or birthday cake Pro bars the best. So let's just take a look at what was going on in those birthday, birthday, birthday cake pro bars. And let's answer the question once and for all Were there nuts in those pro bars? Snack mommy has pro bars. Pro bars. Pro bars? Yeah. Pro bars. Do you guys love pro bars? Yeah. Okay, let me break it up. What kind is this one? Blue, that's right. What kind of? What what flavor is this one? Chocolate. No, is it birthday cake? Birthday cake. Birthday cake. It is important to know that Lavelle Thrive changed the formulation for some of the Pro Bar flavors in 2021, including cookies and cream and the lemon Pro Bars. Lavelle Thrive brand did not change the formulation for the birthday cake pro bars since they were first introduced. So the formulation and the ingredients have remained the same since Lavelle rolled out that flavor of product in 2018. As you can see here, the birthday cake flavored Pro Bars do contain nuts. And in fact, there is an allergy warning on the box saying that they contain milk, soy, and tree nuts. Now this next clip here, which is a full video of the Watts home video in which Cece tells the world that the birthday birthday or birthday cake pro bars are her favorite, is a video that I had uploaded on its own, so maybe you had seen it. And some people I think misinterpreted the message here, but hopefully it makes more sense in this greater context. This is a video where the girls are, as I think it is fairly obvious, but I definitely believe are being bribed with McDonald's to act like they like these pro bars. And the point, guys, is to go to show the lengths that people feel manipulated and coerced into going to, to try to sell these products to their family, friends, neighbors, acquaintances, and colleagues on social media because the MLM structure of a company is one that sets over 99.8% of its participants up for failure, as I've highlighted in other videos. 
Oh, I do also feel the need to say, based on some feedback that I received and have taken into account, that I am not intending by any means to mock the children's voice in this video. I was trying to repeat their voice and the way that it sounded so it would be easier for you to hear in the background because this video was all about listening and watching, listening to and watching what is going on in the background as pretext. See, so it is, I'm home with a family and um, they're excited to try the new Pro Bars and they came in, I think, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we have cookies and cream and we have lemon ring. Who wants Pro Bars? Me. I do. Alright, so who, do you guys want lemon meringue first or do you want cookies and cream? Cookies. Cookies? I want, I want, I want, I want that. You want the lemon meringue? Yeah. Alright, since I have this one open, let's try this one first, okay? Okay. Um, cookies and cream. And Daddy's gonna try it too. Yeah. Are you both? Yes, so everyone's gonna try. Chris Crump. Cookies and cream? All right, Bella gets cookies and cream. Cece gets cookies and cream. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Set. Yeah. You're the taste testers. Yummy. Is it yummy? What's it taste like? Chocolate. Chocolate? What else? Watermelon. Watermelon? <laughs> What's it taste like, Cece? Chocolate. Uh -huh. Chocolate? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is it delicious? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Daddy? Oreo wrapped in vanilla. It's nice. Oreo wrapped in. Celeste has learned the ways of the Watts MLM video and she tells Chris to turn around. Face that camera. Vanilla. Oreo wrapped in vanilla. Mm -hmm. Is it yummy, Cece? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that good, Bella? I think they like cookies and cream. Okay, so let's try the lemon meringue. Hey, everybody. So, um,. Crazy over here. A little crazy over here. Cece loves the cookies and cream. Cece must have answered no when Chris said, Do you like it? Because right after listen, he assures her, ah, I got two of those ice cream cake things. It's the first nod to McDonald's. Don't mind me. It's been a long, long travel day yesterday. I've been cleaning. Been cleaning, regroup, regrouping today. Hey, Jen. Okay, so Chris, this is the lemon meringue. No, that's Daddy's. Here's yours. Wait, don't hit. Wait, wait, wait. Here, Bella. Okay, this one's lemon meringue. It's like the pie, but better, because I don't like the pie. Ready, set, go. Ready? Hey, mm. Jessica. That's so good. How's that taste, Cece? Good. Good? Yeah? Do you like that one better? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me too. I like it. What's it taste like? Here is one of the many examples when Bella or Celeste ask a question and they respond and no adult actually acknowledges them. Cece says Pop Tarts and Chris just talks over her and Shanann doesn't acknowledge her. Bella, what's it taste like? I don't like it. I don't like it. You don't like that one? Bella doesn't like that one. That's okay. okay. Um, you like the you like the birthday cake, right? And the cookies and cream? Mm-hmm. Yep. Dieter, do you want some? Now if you listen carefully here, you hear Bella say, I don't wanna have to chew it and then she's bending over towards the dog and then Shanann says, Oh, Dieter wants some. I feel pretty damn sure that Bella was trying to spit that out so Dieter would eat it. Mm hmm Yeah. Dieter, do you want some? Yeah, Dieter wants some. 
All right, so which one's your favorite out of all the pro bars? Yowzers, look at that look that Chris Watts is giving Shanann. All the pro bars. Annoyance, hey. disgust, and contempt. Hey, Wendy. I would say lemon you know, meringue. It's Cece's turn. Lemon meringue. We'll learn in a few moments. Cece really does not like the lemon meringue at all. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite, Cece? Uh, birthday, birthday. Birthday, birthday? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mommy's favorite. What's your favorite? The cookies, cookies and cream? Wow. We have to keep three on stock. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, how do I turn this around? It's a good thing that I have all three of the favorites in the house. Cinnamon rolls out were um, sold, sold out of it here at the house. When mom is off and busy with the camera elsewhere, Bella feels free to say loudly, I don't like it. Or, um, sold, or, sold out of it here at the house. Sold, or, sold out of it here at the house. Um, You want dip and ranch? You want ranch dip and chips? Creamy ranch sauce. You can't go wrong with our creamy ranch sauce. A zesty and dip ready ranch sauce from McDonald's. Our ranch sauce recipe fuses the flavors of onion and garlic to create a perfectly creamy dipping sauce. Try our ranch dip with your favorite McDonald's menu items like chicken McNuggets or world famous fries. Jess, I have them all. I just um, ate all the cinnamon rolls. Cece actually really likes the cinnamon rolls, too. Look at that one. Cookies and cream. We got cookie monster. <laughs> I'm guessing you like it, kiddo. You like it? You want the lemon meringue, Cece? No, she didn't like that one. I don't like it. Daddy will finish. And really, though, who could blame the side I hear? I mean, these guys are just, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. All right, you guys, so that's that's our family. Um, um, uh, making sure I didn't miss anything. Hey, everybody. So uh, we're a mixed family. Apparently, uh, uh, birthday cake is a winner for me and Cece. Bella loves Daddy. the cookies and cream and Chris's lemon ring, surprisingly, because he's a cookies and cream guy. Yeah. The irony of the next minute or two is just outstanding. And to me, it is a statement about the pressure of MLMs and the way that they make you present your life in a certain way. They make you, they encourage you to sell a certain lifestyle and it's all just very fake. So as mom touts the health benefits of these pro bars, you know, saying there's only two grams of sugar, they're a healthy snack, and oh, great thing is Cece can eat them because she has this Trina allergy and she can't have any preservatives. You hear Cece in the background screaming, I want McDonald's, as you hear Bella asking for dip and ranch, and you can hear that kind of, you know, McDonald's light paper crunching around. It's amazing what you can hear when you have Good headphones on. So, um, super excited. Um, I love it that it's a healthy snack and Cece can eat it because she has a tree nut allergy. And none of our products are made in a, a facility with, that, um, that handles nuts at all. So, Cece can have them. There's zero nuts in them. And, um, and, um, it's the only like go to bar. Like, we can't do processed bars. We can't do anything like this bars. We can't do anything like that because CC can't have any of it because it's all processed in a plant. Any of it because it's all processed in a plant where there's tree nuts or nuts. Um, so it's really nice that she can have it. It's a quick snack for mommy. It's always in my bag. And I can just give it to her. And she, I heard you, baby. I heard you. She wants ranch and dip. She's my child. Um, thanks, Kat. So it's uh, it's really nice. It's it's convenient for me as a mom that I can just carry them in my purse and always have something for her. So super excited. The Pro Bars are amazing. They're a great snack, low carbs, low sugar, two grams of sugar in all of them, I think. Um, but yeah, two grams of sugar and 20 grams of protein. So they're really good for you. So you guys have a great night. Love you. And um, that we're going to be Cece and I fighting over the birthday cake. So, all right. Say bye. Bye.
All right, bye guys. <laughs> There's so much more. This is just one piece, one you want yucky? small piece yes. of the tragic and ironic puzzle. There's just so much to cover on this topic. Please hit like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Rest in peace, sweet angels. Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and baby Nico. That's a new Welcome to Watsi Obsession, a channel that respects both victim families. We ask that you do the same in chat and in your comments. You know, like when the whole thing with my parents happened, my parents called it a gate.